Today, using Apple Motion, we're gonna build a quick and easy number animator for Final Cut Pro. Also, if you're a patron, you can download this project and use it in your videos right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can go up to File and select New from Project Browser. From there, we will select the Final Cut title. After that, I recommend you set your duration to something like 10 seconds and push open. The first thing we need to do is delete the title background and type text here layers. Then from there, go on over to your left hand side and locate your generators. After that, locate the text generator and in here you can see we have our numbers. I'll go ahead and just click and drag this into our layer stack and that way we have our numbers directly in the center of the screen. From there, we can go into the inspector and go to our format options. Let's go ahead and scale this number up quite a bit. And from here, you can change stuff like your font, your alignment, everything you might wanna change so that you're not constantly changing it in the future. Now that we've got that set up, go ahead and select your generator settings and in here is where the magic is gonna happen. You'll notice that at the top, there is this animate checkbox. If I push play right now, the numbers are going to count from one all the way up to 600 over the entire duration of this number layer. What we can do is go ahead and disable this animate checkbox Box, and now we'll see we have a value slider. If we ever wanted to animate this, all we would need to do in Final Cut Pro is go ahead and click to add a keyframe, move forward to the end of the animation and drag this value up until you are a number you're happy with. So now over the duration of this, that number is going to animate up to 700. If you wanted to, all you would need to do is go ahead and click on this down arrow and push publish. And now that option would be available over in Final Cut Pro. But what I wanna do is somewhat automate this process so that we just type in the number and we don't have to add in any keyframes. So if you wanna do that, go ahead and click to reset the parameter on this value slider, then selecting our original numbers layer, go ahead and push Command D. This is going to duplicate that layer and we're just gonna call this the counter layer. From there, I want to actually hide the counter layer so that we just have our numbers layer visible. There is no layers underneath. And just to make things extra easy, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this numbers layer up above the counter in the layer stack. Selecting our numbers layer, go on over to your value and click on this down arrow. We'll go to add parameter behavior and select link. From there, we can click and drag the counter into this drop well here. So now whatever value this counter is set to will now drive the numbers inside of our numbers layer. Now the reason we wanna do this is because of a very powerful feature inside of our link parameter. Currently, we have our custom mix set to one, which means that at all times, these two parameters are going to be linked up. If we wanted to, we could animate this custom mix on our own. So I'll go ahead and drag that custom mix down to zero. We could click to add a keyframe and then move forward about a second or so, however long you want this to be, and then drag that custom mix all the way up to one. So now over one second, that animation is going to take place. From there, we could go on over into our keyframe editor and see the keyframes that we've just added. You'll notice that it's a nice linear animation with a straight line. Maybe we wanna add some easing to these values. Well, to do that, go ahead and just click and drag over both values, then right click, go to interpolation, and then select Bezier. You'll notice that this has now created a nice Bezier S curve on our animation. It'll be hard to see, but you'll see that we have a little bit of easing in our numbers. From there, we could select this top value and go ahead and drag this handle out to the left side. So now we have kind of this weird S shape. You'll see that our values slow way down at the very end. So you can get really creative with how this animation looks by adjusting these different keyframes. Now, if we want this animation to always stay the same direction, we need to go to the end of this animation about one second in we'll push shift M and that will give us this green marker right clicking on that marker go ahead and select edit marker and now we can change the type of the marker right now it's just set to standard which means it's just a regular marker on our timeline but if we click on that we can change it over to build in optional and now I can push OK what this has enabled us to do is over in Final Cut Pro, we can enable or disable that built-in animation. So if we wanna have our numbers automatically count to whatever value we've set in the counter slider, we can go ahead and leave that enabled over in Final Cut Pro. All we need to do from here is go into our counter 
and find the value slider. Go ahead and click on the down arrow and publish that. Then everything else from the numbers slider needs to be published over into Final Cut Pro. So we could change stuff like the format and I'll go ahead and publish that. And what's cool about the format is we could change it over to currency, percent, scientific, spell out, binary and hexadecimal. So stuff like spell out is really fun. You'll see how it's actually writing out the words on the screen. Let's change this over to currency and you'll notice that we have our decimal slider here as well. So we can go ahead and click on that down arrow and publish that. Then underneath that is these thousands separator. So we can publish that as well. Now there's one last slider that is hiding because we are in the currency setting. So go ahead and change that back over to number and you'll see the minimum digits. Clicking on that down arrow, we can publish that as well. Then at the very bottom, you'll see that there is a region setting. Unfortunately, at this time, you cannot publish that into Final Cut Pro. So you'll need to set up the region before you publish everything to Final Cut Pro. So if you're wanting to use a different type of currency, maybe from Japan or Spain, you have all those options in here that you can select. Once you've set that up, you should be good to go. From there, we can go ahead and push Command S to save it, and we'll just call this numbers or whatever you want to send it over to Final Cut Pro. You can then throw it into whatever category you like. I'll throw it into tutorials and push publish. As it is, we have these numbers over inside of Final Cut Pro, which is really cool. However, I would love to add a little bit more flair to these numbers so they look even nicer in presentation. To do that, go ahead and select your numbers. Go on up to behaviors and go down to text continuous. There's a whole bunch of different options you can choose from. Let's go ahead and choose quiver. If we push play, you'll notice now that our numbers are very slightly quivering, almost giving it kind of a hand-drawn feel, which I really like. Additionally, let's go ahead and make it so we can apply a drop shadow directly inside of Final Cut Pro. So we'll go up to our group, we can go to properties, go down to the bottom and locate drop shadow. And here we could publish this parameter. I'll go ahead and enable it. We could click show. Now we could change the color to whatever we like. So if I wanted it to be red, just so it really pops from the background, you can see just like so. We could blur it if we wanted to. I'll go ahead and leave it nice and sharp and you can adjust your angle. But then from there, you could go through each of these values and publish them so that you can change them in Final Cut Pro to whatever you like. So now pushing play, we have this nice little animation happening on our text. All we need to do once again is push Command S to save those changes, then we can jump inside of Final Cut Pro. In Final Cut Pro, I'll go ahead and just drop in a background from my minimalist backgrounds pack. Then we could scroll through, find the category where we placed our generator. It'll actually be under titles and we'll see that we have our numbers selector. So I could just drop this down on the timeline. If we push play, it's auto animated for us. Then we can go into the title settings and we could adjust stuff like the value. So we could really crank that up if we wanted to. We could add additional decimals. We could change the currency over to dollars, which means we could go ahead and make this say $340.50. Tons and tons of options, including the drop shadow, which we can change to look however we want. Again, that'll just auto count up to that value. If you don't want it to auto animate, all you need to do is disable this checkbox and our value slider will still have the capabilities of adding in a keyframe. So we could go ahead, add a keyframe to start at $340.50. Then we could set the value to a different thing. So now it's at $46. So that will actually subtract that value over the duration that we've set up on our animation. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you how to build a countdown timer. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.